Today on Addicted to Gear, we're going to finally unveil the mystery Instagram guitar. Stay tuned. Those of you following me on Instagram probably already know that I post regular photos, videos, clips, fun things behind the scenes that you don't normally get to see here on the Addicted to Gear channel. So if you're not already following me on my Instagram, you're basically missing out on half of the fun. So take a moment, click the link down below and just follow me on Instagram. A couple of weeks back, I posted some photos that I thought would be fun to kind of quiz you guys on and see whether or not you can guess the guitar. And I posted a couple of shots of the guitar I'm holding right here and uh, I asked what you guys thought it was. And a lot of you guys took some guesses. I think some of you said Ibanez. Some of you said um, Sir, if I'm not mistaken. Charvel was one of the guesses. Um, there was a few other brands in there. Unfortunately, none of you guys guessed correctly. So today I'm going to reveal the guitar in question. And that is this really nice looking guitar that I'm holding here today. This is something that I purchased on eBay, spur of the moment, just because it looked too interesting to pass up. This guitar was only $219 USD on eBay, including free shipping. I can't pass that up. When I was looking at the images, uh, they seemed pretty legit. It's hard to tell sometimes, but I feel like I have a pretty good eye for these things. There was not a whole lot of information in terms of the description on this guitar either. I was basically just going uh, by the photos, which is kind of risky and I don't recommend that most of the time. But this time I have to say, I think um, I got a really nice guitar. So I want to talk about this guitar a little bit today, go into details and show you what it is. So the brand is called, if I pronounce it correctly guys, and forgive me if I don't, I always miss up these, these Chinese names. This is a Chinese uh, brand called Zoe or Zui or it's Z, it's Z-U-W-E-I, okay? So Z-U-W-E-I. You figure out how to say it. I don't know. When I received this guitar, I was blown away. I thought, you know, for $200, I was getting something really nice. Not only because it was well put together and played well, but also because it had a lot of the features that I've seen recently on much, much higher end guitars. So let's talk about that a little bit, okay? Let's start off with the neck because the neck on this guitar is quite unique. As you can see, it's got a reverse headstock. Now, I am not a fan of reverse headstocks. I've said it before, but unfortunately this, this model, or you know, the whole line actually, only comes with a reverse headstock. So I figured I'd give it a shot. This is actually the first guitar that I own with a reverse headstock. Now the interesting thing here is if you do this, the headstock looks very, very similar to a Sir headstock. Don't you think? The biggest shortcoming on this guitar for me is the fact that it is a reverse headstock. If it was a regular headstock, I would be all over these guitars, okay? Beyond the fact that the headstock is a reverse headstock, the neck itself is a wonderful neck. It really is. A roasted maple neck. Look how deep and really nice that neck is. It's got a beautiful look to it. Uh, the front and back look gorgeous. There's no skunk stripe on this one, you can see. I haven't like verified it, but it looks and feels to me like it's between a 12 and a 14 radius. The frets on this guitar are medium frets, but nice and wide. There's absolutely no fret sprout whatsoever on the edges. The inlays are dots, very tastefully done. You got dots on the side as well here. The overall quality of this neck is amazing. 
The truss rod is here at the bottom. So again, very similar to what you would find on a Charvel. And I like this type of truss rod. It's great. It doesn't strip out and it's easy to get to. You don't need any special tools. You can put a screwdriver in there if you don't have an Allen key. It's great. It's convenient and it just works so well. Now, I was also surprised to see that the nut is bone and was extremely well cut. It wasn't high at all. The slots were cut to the right uh, width and it just makes the overall playability on this guitar great. 24 frets. This is one of the reasons why I purchased it because I don't like to have all of my guitars looking, sounding, and playing the same. I like different options on my guitars. The actual name is really nicely done in um, reflective lettering that you can actually feel. So this is not a, a silk screen. It's an applique of some sort, but it's actually really nice. It looks like a high-end guitar. The back of the headstock, we can see that it has uh, regular type tuners. Now these are not locking tuners, which I feel is a shame because if, if this guitar had locking tuners, it would definitely be a step above. But the tuners work as they should. I have no issues with those and I can replace them out if I want to later on. Now the body on this guitar is quite a unique color. I don't have any guitar of this color. So it fits in with the rest of the herd. Now these humbuckers are ceramic hum humbuckers. They're not Alnico magnets. And often people will consider ceramic magnets to be cheaper or not sound as nice as um, Alnico magnets. I think the ceramics tend to have a little bit more bite, a little bit more output. And as long as they don't sound muddy, I'm okay with them. I really am. The bridge on this guitar is a two post bridge as you can see there. And this bridge looks very similar to the bridge saddles that you would see on a PRS. It's kind of like that style of bridge saddles I noticed, which is interesting. Now it works well. There's no funny noises when you're, you know, pulling down on it. It is a floating bridge, so you can pull up on it as well as pull down on it. Um, and it works really nicely, no issues there. The arm is a screw-in arm, it's not a push-in arm. Okay, just wanted to point that out. Tone, volume, and a three-way switch. There's no fancy push-pull pots on this guitar or anything like that. The actual contouring on the body is to me, reminds me more of a Jackson guitar because it's not rounded off on the edges. So between a Jackson or an Ibanez, the actual horns here, again, they're kind of between a Jackson, I would say, and maybe a Charvel. It has a lot of influences on a lot of, <laughs> from a lot of different guitars. This is one of the cool things about this guitar. If you look at the back, this is where things come in, become interesting. So. Not only do you have your typical tummy tuck, you do have your little carve here that you would normally see on a Sir guitar. Like my Sir guitar has a little sort of carve to make it more comfortable when you're playing on the upper registry of the fret, fretboards. And that's super nice to see. The heel on this guitar is rounded and so is the, the top end of the guitar. No uh, neck plate here, except it's got four screws, like you would see on the Ibanez guitars. Now, this is something that I thought was really cool because this is a feature that I really like on the new Charvels. And that is the Strat style input jack in the back of the guitar. And the guitar is actually cut at an angle. So when you're actually playing your guitar, like I usually put my lead over my strap so I don't, you know, it doesn't get tangled in my legs and plug it in my guitar. Well, this one allows you to do that, but in the back, you know, so it's really convenient. It comes in this way and you just plug it in and it's not in your way. And this is a really nice feature that I really liked on the Charvels and it's on this particular model. They kept the 
cost down by not including fancy switching or you know really expensive pickups and stuff like that out of the box don't feel this guitar needs any modifications i think it's great the way it is so i'm super happy with it let's play some sounds and hear what it sounds like in a mix and just um, give you an idea of what you can get in terms of uh, really cool guitar sounds here So guys, that's it for today. If you're interested in this guitar, I'll put the information down below. If you're curious about it and have any additional questions you wanna ask me about it, feel free, I'll be happy to fill you in. And you'll probably see this guitar popping up on other videos as well because I really am enjoying it so much. It's a really good alternative to some very, very expensive other brands out there. And uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy it too. So if you want to get more information on gear and guitars, then please subscribe to this channel because I will be posting additional videos coming up and you don't want to miss anything cool like another really cool guitar, do you? So please hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified and subscribe to the channel so that you can get all of your gear addiction fixes right here on Addicted to Gear. See you soon, guys.